everyone and welcome to our video on Photoshop elements and creating a drop shadow and why do we create a drop shadow. So here we are in Photoshop elements 2021. So obviously you're going to see different versions depending on when you're watching this video. Um, you may have Photoshop 2020, you may have something else. In terms of the Photoshop, you may have Photoshop 2024. I don't know how long this video will be around, but obviously uh, they all the two all the tools seem to work so far. The, the tools in Photoshop always seem to work correctly and, and the same. So you'll be able to easily follow along with this video. So in starting, we are going to open a new project uh, and we are going to open, sorry, we're going to open a blank page. Uh, and when we open a blank page, I know a lot of you are probably creating in US sizes of eight and a half by 11 or metric sizes of A4, right? So we can use international paper as A4 and in the millimeters. Secondly, we want to have the resolution at 300, uh, 300 dots per inch. That's what you actually buy our Nitwit kits at. Okay, so that gives you a high resolution. And lastly, where you have background contents, you want to set that as transparent. We don't want any color behind there to when you place an image or anything like that. We don't want anything else in behind that. Um, that way, it's not so, it's not important when you're actually placing a background paper. That doesn't matter because you're covering the entire background anyhow. But if you wanted to use uh, Photoshop elements to just uh, resize and print some elements or a photo or something like that you don't want any color in behind so that way you can easily trim it uh, without having anything else that it's put in behind that image so I'm just gonna go to US paper uh, and as you can see in here you can also do a 12 by 12 and you can create that uh, something we can cover in another video if that's important to you so I'm gonna do US paper and transparent and there we go so there is our working background palette so um, what I want to do, I'm just going to make this a little larger so it'll be a little easier for us all to see. There we go. So we're going to want to add a background paper to this. So let's start out. I'm actually going to use our idyllic collection. Uh, I'll link, the, link it in the description box if, if that's something. If you happen to see this and you like it, there you go. Um, so we're going to add a background paper. When you add the background paper to your blank canvas, uh, if you want, you can press and hold your left mouse button, press and hold your shift key at the same time if you and drag that onto our blank page, release the shift and mouse button at the same time and it will center it on the page for you. So sometimes that's really, really important for you so you can place something on very easily. So just a quick tip in case that helps anybody. So let's take this and just shrink it a little bit to fit that page. I'm going to move that over. I kind of like that look. And there we go. We say OK to that. We'll get rid of the paper just to unclutter our desktop and away we go. So there's our page. So why do we want a drop shadow in the, in the first place? A drop shadow is there because digitally when you create something, obviously when you create something in physical paper, there's going to be a shadow based upon the sunlight from the outdoors that's shining in your window, uh, whether that's a light in that particular room, you're going to have those things there and we want to create that digitally. The other thing is, is we want, if we're layering two elements on top, one on top of another, we want that shadow there to make it look like it's paper. Um, we want that to, so that you can see, hey, this looks like two separate elements made out of paper and that were layered together and we can see a shadow there. So that is, you know, kind of the point of it all. So we're going to first add in, um, well, let's just try with the butterfly. It's quick and easy. It's right here. So I will just drag and drop that on here rather than having to use the shift key. It doesn't really matter if it's centered or not. I'll take and I will, oops, sorry about that. I will shrink this down. That's probably about the right size. Give it a little turn here, place it in the corner. Okay, so I like the element there. Um, and let's go ahead and do this as a dual element. Um, let's choose a flower cluster. Let's put that in there. We'll get rid of that. And we can see our flower cluster is going to go over top of our butterfly. That's not where we want it. We want our flower cluster to be underneath our butterfly. So we'll just drag that layer underneath. And there we go. We'll shrink that layer down. So that layer looks about right. Make it a little bit bigger. That's about right for the scale on that page. So I'll confirm that. Now when we go to our butterfly layer, our butterfly is a little on the big side. So we'll just shrink him down like that. We'll say, okay. And now let me blow this up so that we can all 
see this a little larger. Okay, so now what we want to do is add a drop shadow. So that when we, let me go back to full page, if you wanted to use this as your card front, obviously you can see you can put in another main element, uh, you can have a sentiment, happy birthday or something on the front, whatever, and you can print that as one item and you're going to see we're going to end up with a shadow on here, so it's going to look that way. Alternatively, let's just say we didn't have the background paper on here and we were just doing elements because we wanted to um, then print those elements, have either a cutting machine cut them out or fussy cut them, and I wanted to have that look still that we're going to get here. That is the reason um, why we're going to add this drop shadow here. So let's go back to large again and scroll down and over and there we go. So drop shadow. There's a couple ways of doing this. They are called styles in Photoshop Elements. So when I click on styles, you can see at the top there's drop shadows, there's bevels, there's uh, glass buttons, inner and outer glows, there's inner shadows, there's all kinds of stuff in here. But for today, we're just dealing with drop shadows. You can see they give you eight preset drop shadows. And we'll just click on some of these here. As you can see, um, hey, there might be one in here that you just think is fantastic. So like, let's just say you clicked on that one actually. Let's do something else here, blah, blah, blah. Let's say we chose this one in the bottom, what they're calling the soft edge. And say you looked at that and you said, you know what, I really like that, I'm done. Fantastic, that was simple, super easy. Now, shadowing, let's talk about that for one quick spot, sec. Shadowing is in the eye of the beholder. There is no right and there is no wrong. This is not an exact science, this is not green means go and red means stop, it's, that, that is not it at all. This is like an opinion. Everybody is right because it is your opinion, but you're only right for you. Okay, so let's um, let's start by saying that. So like what you see as looks great is great for you, and that is right for you. Do, don't change for anybody else. That's right for what you want to look at. So for this particular, for these presets, I don't particularly care for them. And I want you. To, I want to show you a way that you can actually do it all by yourself and have the exact look that you want in case that you don't like these. So up on layer three, I have it highlighted. I'm going to right click on it. I'm going to choose clear layer style. And there we go. So I've cleared that off. So that's an easy way, if, again, if you didn't know that, um, you can clear that off if you want. And we're also going to be able to duplicate it the same way. So if I want to apply that same shadow to something else on the page, I'm going to be able to duplicate it very easily. So let's go up to the word layer, click on that, choose layer style and style settings. And here we go. We have drop shadow. We're going to highlight that little checkbox to mean, yes, yes, this is the one that I want. I don't want the glow or the bevel or the stroke. It's only the drop shadow. So within here, um, let's have a keep your eyes on the butterfly there. And we're going to turn up the opacity. Opacity will... Um, as you can see, there is a color box here. So we have it set to black. That's its preset. If I turn the opacity way up to 100, as you can see, it's really, really super dark. So basically black. If I turn it down to like 5 or somewhere in there, it is going to be basically a light gray. So this is going to control how strongly you're going to see your shadow. Let's just kind of set it here, which is quite strong, just because I want you to see what these other ones do. Size, when we use size, Think of size like a soft shadow. See how that kind of is darker in the inside and gets lighter as it hits the, the outside of the shadow? So that's kind of like a soft shadow. So we'll move that back down, get that out of the way. And distance is a hard shadow. So as you can see by distance, all it's doing is taking the image, duplicating it, and it being in the, the darkness of the opacity. That's all it's doing. We are going to use, in order to create a good drop shadow, again, my opinion of a drop shadow, let's clarify that, um, you're going to use a combination of both distance and size to achieve it. Okay. Then we're going to set the opacity uh, in order to make sure it's not too strong or, or too weak. So all that we do is we just play with these numbers. This is what playing is all about. Okay. So I want a little bit of distance. I want it to, to come out from the butterfly a little bit. I want to give it, soften it a little bit as well. I don't want it to be really harsh. And then the color for me is too strong. So let's just turn this down. You're going to find that when you slide these little uh, slide bars, you let like push and hold with your left mouse button, slide it down, then release it and let it, that'll give you a preview of it. Okay. 
as you can see, the little box is checked off here for preview. So it, it's showing you exactly what it's going to do. If I was to push cancel here, um, it would take it right off. It wouldn't apply anything. So that's kind of, it's an easy way of just previewing it and seeing if you like it before you press OK. So that shadow to me looks pretty good. I like the look of it. I actually will give it a little less distance and a little more opacity. Okay. So to me, I like the look of that shadow. The, again, the idea is is something to your eye that looks right, like so that it mimics what paper would look like if these two were combined. Now lastly, we're going to go up to the lighting angle. So think of the lighting angle like sunshine on a sundial. Okay, This one, the, the sun is coming from this angle at 120 and, uh, and, sorry, and it's shining down at an angle of 120 degrees. Okay, So it starts up in the top left or northeast and comes down to the, sorry, northwest and comes down to the southeast. So if uh, that's okay on this paper, if that's the way I wanted it to go, if I didn't have a background behind this and this was just an element that I wanted to print, obviously that's not going to be the right angle for the shadow. We're going to want the shadow to go this way. So we just simply click it up there and you can see how that shadow immediately moved over there. Maybe I wanted a little bit more going that way. Now see how this shadow goes across the, the uh, flower cluster underneath. So it gives the look of a piece of paper on top of another piece of paper. That's the intended look. Now you can see how this, the shadow really, again, in my opinion, isn't strong enough. It's not dark enough. We need to darken this up to show it off a little bit more now that we change the angle. And that's the thing about drop shadowing. You're going to be constantly changing it. Usually once you have it for a particular uh, project you're working on, boom, Bob's your uncle. Like you will have, that is a shadow you can just click and duplicate for other elements and away you go because you're using a similar color palette and tone um, within that, uh, within the, the kit you're working in. Um, but this is the point of the, the lighting angle. So right now, this is kind of how I'm going to apply it. Uh, I want that sort of look to it. So I'm going to press OK. But before I do, um, the version of Photoshop Elements 2021 that I'm using is the free trial version because we obviously don't use this program to design in. We use a, a Photoshop CC. So I'm told that, so uh, hopefully I'm not lying to you here. I'm told that there should also be a button in here that will allow you to save this. Okay, because you may want to save this and use it further on down the road and then it will show up in your styles palette. You're going to see save settings. Uh, you're going to see a button over here. So um, take that with a bit of a grain of salt because you, you, if you want to, you can save that and not have to recreate it every time. If you want to recreate it, chances are you've saved this file somewhere. So just bring this file in when you're creating another uh, your, a project down the way. And you'll be able to grab this style off of this because it's saved within your uh, within your work. So let's go ahead and press OK. So there it is. Let's just scroll out a little bit, see what it looks like. So when we see the whole page, we can see how that butterfly, let me just click off of it for a second. We can see how that butterfly looks like it's now layered on top of the flowers. Okay, so secondly and lastly here, and then I will let you go, is on, this is our butterfly layer, layer three here. So let's click on our butterfly. You see the little FX next to it? So it indicates that there's a layer style. If you double click, double left click on that, see how it brings it up right away? So if I didn't like the shadow and I said, oh, it's got too much distance and I wanted to bring that down or I wanted to give it a little bit more, whatever it is, you can easily edit this once again by just bringing that up. Lastly, if you want to copy it and apply it to the flowers, Again, I have that butterfly layer highlighted. I press my right click on my mouse button and you'll see down here it says copy layer style. So we choose that. Then I go on to my flowers layer. I right click on that and I choose paste layer style. Now look at how the exact same layer style has been applied. Now you look at that and you say, okay, maybe that's not quite the look I wanted because the flowers are a little, little different. That's maybe a little harsh because it's got the white background. Again, I can double left click on the FX button. It brings it up. I'm only adjusting the one on the flowers. I'm not adjusting both. I'm only adjusting the one on the flowers. I want this to have a little more, uh, little more size to soften it out a little bit. And boom, there you go. Again, in my opinion, that looks nice. Actually, the size is a little bit too much now. So let's turn the size back down. Away we go. And there you have it.
So that is how and why you apply a drop shadow in Photoshop Elements. Lastly, to give you a little bit of help with it, I am going to open, hang on a sec, let's go back down here. How do you know, or a lot of you when you first start out are gonna say, well, geez, like, you know, I did a shadow, I kinda liked it when I did it, and then uh, after I did it, I kinda didn't like it anymore when I saw other people's shadows. So I want to, you know, I, I wish I could get a shadow more like them. Here's a quick tip and a quick trick here, is we are going to look at this, and we are going to say, um, let's look at, hang on, let's just bring that back down again. Let's put that over here, and let's put this one over here, and let's blow up this layout to 200%. See how Mary Fran on her layout used uh, a shadow on this photo? And if you said, you know what, I really like that. That's what you do when you're on Pinterest or you're on our website and you think, hey, I'd like to copy the shadow because I sure like how she did it. Use this just as a frame of reference. I do this all the time because to be honest with you, Mary Fran's way better at this than I am, obviously. Uh, that's why she's the designer and I'm not. Uh, if you really like that, let's just blow this up again and, and look at the butterfly really quickly here. If you look at the butterfly and you say, okay, does my shadow look like the one that is here? No. Mary Fran's shadow is a lot more distinct on the edge. I've used the soft, the size to soften it a bit. So let's go back onto the butterfly layer and its effects. And I can turn the size down a little bit. I can turn the distance up a bit and see how it crisps up the edge. So now I'm a lot closer in how Mary Fran's shadow looks. And I really like the look of it. And I am also have about the same darkness of it, the same depth. So that's where, my opacity, where I would use my opacity. So when looking at that, I say, okay, that's better. Way I go, now I'm happy, and I've used, utilize people's, that we all draw inspiration from somewhere. That's the reason that we show you layouts and cards and things like that, is to hopefully give you some information, inf inspiration, sorry, and we also want you to be able to utilize those as tools, so that you can look at something like that and say, wow, I like the look of that. You know what? I'm going to try and copy that, and this is an easy way to do it. So, once again, this is, we can put this back up here, I guess. Uh, this is our version of doing a drop shadow in Photoshop Elements in order to give you that look that you wanted. Once again, like I said, if you wanted to print the element, there it would be with a, that transparent background. You would be able to print this. Let's just scroll in on it again. You would be able to print this and it would have the look of paper, but we would print this as one complete, both the, the flowers and the butterfly printed as one complete item and it looks like two separate paper pieces for you. So, I hope you've enjoyed watching this. Once again, give us a, before you go, you'll see our Knitwear Collections logo down in the right hand side of the screen. Click on that to be notified of any time we have new videos come up. As well, give us the thumbs up, let us, give us a comment on this if you've had a question about it, or you wanted to see another video, or anything like that, we're always happy to help and to answer your questions. Thanks once again, and I hope that this helps uh, make your crafting a little easier. Thanks again and happy crafting.